Hi, good afternoon. This is Dr. Sapna, one of the consultants at ARGC. We asked you all on Instagram if you all had any questions and these are answers to the questions you all had. How to start the process at ARGC? If you would like to be seen by the medical team here, you need to go to the website, put in your details. They will respond to you with an appointment which typically takes about 4 weeks. you will then be seen by the medical team on usually on video conferencing once you've been seen by the medical team you can start straight away there's no further wait list and then it depends on your hormones and your cycle as to when you can start failed implantation with genetically tested embryos what can we do so each case has to be individualized depending on their history medical history hormones pelvic anatomy So we need to assess sometimes simple things like the progesterone hormone and if they need additional progesterone during the post transfer phase. Sometimes it's monitoring their thyroid and prolactin which are hormones which are necessary for implantation. Sometimes it's something as simple as your general health, vitamin D, iron levels. But more importantly in terms of implantation failure, the things to be looked at are the structural anatomy of the uterus ie a hysteroscopy may be required sometimes we look at the immunological dysfunction which are specialized blood tests which are indicated in certain cases and sometimes it's looking at things like blood clotting problems like antiphospholipid antibodies sometimes it's looking at the bacteria in the uterus which can play a role with uh, failed implantation i have low progesterone and keep miscarrying how can you help Low progesterone is a very important cause we tend to see both for failed implantation and in terms of miscarriage. And in this situation we would monitor your progesterone regularly and sometimes you will need much higher doses of progesterone in order to sustain a pregnancy. I have a low AMH and keep miscarrying and I've been told I have poor egg quality. What can we do about egg quality? All of us women are born with a certain cohort of eggs. As we get older, the numbers go down and the quality goes down. So, when we are older, we can't turn around the biological clock. But there are simple things that can sometimes help to optimize the quality of eggs that we produce and stimulate in treatment cycles. So, simple things like health and lifestyle, acupuncture, use of supplements can help. Use of a supplement called DHEA can sometimes be helpful. the right ovulation stimulation protocol like using natural cycle modified natural cycle can sometimes help but broadly it depends on the individual person's history and egg reserve women pregnancy natural in 40s typically when they are in the 40s the number of eggs and quality of eggs go downhill and the chances of pregnancy get quite significantly lower Between the age of 40 and 42 there is a reasonable chance for some women depending on their egg reserve but over the age of 42 as we approach 43 44 and 45 the chances go down quite significantly and steeply and of course again it does depend on an individual woman's egg reserve even between the age of 40 and 42 have we done pregnancies in women with estrogen positive breast cancer and how does it work It's a very difficult scenario of course to be in such a situation where you have been diagnosed with cancer. In women with estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, the concern is a risk of recurrence of the breast cancer due to high estrogen levels with ovarian stimulation which is required in IVF. In this scenario, of course one has to liaise with your medical oncology team in order to make the right decisions first and foremost. In the stimulation protocol the use of certain medication like letrozole can help to limit the estrogen levels and therefore limit the risk of recurrence. Does high AMH mean poor egg quality? This is not necessarily the case because there can be many women with high AMH and a large number of eggs who can produce good quality eggs and embryos depending on their age. But yes, sometimes in women with polycystic ovaries, there is a tendency to produce more immature eggs and sometimes poorer quality, but the ovarian stimulation protocol can also help to try and get better quality eggs. Does acupuncture help? I had it once but did not feel anything afterwards. 
acupuncture and its use in assisted reproduction is quite controversial in terms of the outcomes. Some papers suggest positive effects in terms of uh, blood flow to the uterus and ovary, implantation, response, but others do not. So what we tend to suggest is that sometimes it's useful in women with repeated unsuccessful cycles where you want to try everything possible, but it's not something I would recommend in the first instance for everyone. Large amount of immature eggs at egg collection, any advice? This is actually a problem that can sometimes be addressed by the ovarian stimulation protocol, by the number of days of stimulation, by the trigger dose, sometimes using a dual trigger, which is a combination of the standard HCG and an antagonist trigger, and sometimes also altering the time between the trigger and the egg collection. So these can potentially help us to try and improve the number of mature eggs. Who would you recommend immunology screening to? Immunology screening, as everybody knows, is quite a controversial subject. It is useful to consider this in certain cases, those with recurrent implantation failure, repeated miscarriages where the couple are young and we believe that there is a possibility of healthy embryos uh, leading to pregnancies. In those who have autoimmune conditions, both in themselves and with a strong family history, these are candidates to consider for immunology testing. What is the process for a natural frozen embryo replacement cycle? This is typically quite simple, but involves monitoring your natural cycle starting from the first or second day of your period with a hormone blood test and scan, following it up with a scan around ovulation, and then your hormones are monitored for the week afterwards at regular intervals. And if the blood tests show that the hormones look good, we thaw the embryo and if it survives, we put it back and then carry on monitoring the progesterone thereafter. What are the success rates for women age 40 with male factor infertility? The success rates will depend on the ovarian reserve for the index woman, her previous history, the previous cycles, and also the degree of the male factor infertility, whether it's mild or severe male factor. So the combination will determine the success rates and it has to be individualized depending on their results. The best way to improve a 35% DNA fragmentation test result. So the DNA fragmentation test has become a commonly used test in the private sector for people with unexplained infertility, male factor infertility, repeated unsuccessful cycles and so on. So it is useful to give us a bit more insight from the male side of things. Simple things are improvement in health, lifestyle, eating and drinking the right things, perhaps going on supplements, regular ejaculation, Avoiding simple things like long distance driving and cycling. In addition, it's very important to screen for possible correctable factors like infections or a condition called varicocele, which is dilated veins around the testis. So while simple changes in lifestyle may help, it's more important also to try and exclude correctable factors and treat those if there are any. Thank you so much for all your questions. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and we will get back to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.